the mastodon, a prehistoric relative of modern-day elephants. These large mammals weighed around 8 tons and stood at 3 meters, or 10 feet tall. They were typically shorter than today's elephants, but with more muscular legs and thicker-set bones. Some species had long, curved tusks, whilst others had none at all. They roamed North and Central America from the late Miocene, 11 million years ago, to the end of the Pleistocene, 10,000 years ago. The family Mamutidae, to which mastodons belonged, diverged from the Elephantidae, containing mammoths and elephants, approximately 27 million years ago. Whilst the Elephantidae lineage went on to become the elephants we know today, the mastodons became extinct at the end of the last ice age. But if they hadn't become extinct, could these prehistoric animals survive nowadays? To answer this question, we need to consider the conditions in which the mastodon thrived and compare them to today. Let's first consider their climate. Some have pictured mastodons as woolly elephants. Drawings and models depict a layer of visible fur covering them from head to toe. But there is no scientific evidence of this. There seems to be evidence that they were not well adapted to the cold at all. This is one of the reasons why scientists believe the great mastodons became extinct. They preferred habitats made up of dense conifer forests or swampland. They inhabited the Arctic during warmer periods in the Earth's history, when ice sheets didn't cover the north. Mastodon DNA has been found in Greenland. This was a complete surprise to scientists, as it was previously thought that these animals didn't venture that far north. But Greenland was a different place back then. Advancements in DNA sequencing techniques have provided us with a window through which we can see the past. Greenland was covered in greenery. Poplar and cedar trees, now only found in temperate forests, thrived. Caribou and mastodons grazed the vegetation. Horseshoe crabs, now found much further south, were abundant amongst corals in the coastal waters. Lemmings darted through the undergrowth. But when the ice sheets advanced and the dense forest gave way to the frozen steppe, Mastodons migrated. Greenland became the harsh polar desert it is today, as the Ice Age gripped the planet. With their habitat gone, the Mastodons struggled in the conditions. Their food sources and habitat dried up, but those that survived left the icy north and headed southwards throughout America to escape the advancing ice. The American Mastodon now presided mostly near the Great Lakes. How many survived is not known but it is thought that their population size contracted significantly. During the Pleistocene, the Laurentide ice sheet covered most of Canada and the northern US. But as the ice sheet began to recede towards the end of the Pleistocene, the forests began to return. There is evidence that mastodons were beginning to follow the re-emergence of the forests in the eastern states before their ultimate demise, around 10,000 years ago. The theory of overkill has been put forward to explain the extinction of much of America's megafauna at the Pleistocene-Holocene boundary, but humans were already around for thousands of years before mastodons became extinct. Some suggest that the climate change pushed mastodons to the edge of extinction, and humans pushed them over. But it seems that had they survived the Pleistocene-Holocene boundary, then they probably would have survived the change to the climatic conditions of today. Although the world may have changed too much for the likes of woolly mammoths, it seems plausible that mastodons could survive in North America's modern climate. Now let's consider diet. Compared to other proboscideans, mastodons were much more specific to browsing. Analysis of their gut contents showed a preference for woody material, such as coniferous twigs. For this reason, they preferred to live in the closed forest habitats rather than the open grasslands. Further examination showed that they also fed on low, herbaceous vegetation, suggesting some pursued a more mixed browsing-grazing style of feeding. It could have been that their diet was determined by seasonal changes. Their reluctance or inability to graze grasses may have been the reason why they never made it to South America during the Great American Interchange. Doing so would have meant that they would have passed through large expanses of open grassland. Studies on the microware of the teeth suggests that the vegetation and mushrooms consumed varied regionally and between populations. Their teeth structure differed significantly from other proboscideans, namely elephants and mammoths. Mammoths had flat ridged molars that they used for grazing grasses, whilst mastodons had cone-shaped points on their teeth. 
They were used for crushing woody vegetation like twigs and leaves. They mostly ate from coniferous woodlands that were near ponds, swamps, and bogs. Although mammoths are closely related to modern-day elephants, there are similarities between mastodons and elephants too. They were likely very destructive like elephants, stomping down vegetation and knocking over trees whilst feeding. This probably meant that they had to continuously move from one place to the next. Today, over a third of North America is forested, with coniferous forests dominating in the West. Some of these are publicly owned, and others are private. Large swaths of the northwestern states are covered in temperate coniferous forests that stretch up into Canada's western coastline. Taiga, a type of coniferous forest, covers much of Canada, Alaska, and the northern states. It is plausible that these woodland habitats would provide enough food for a small population of mastodons. But to understand if they could survive in the modern era, it is important to find out exactly what caused their extinction. Of course, we can't know for sure. If they survived the fluctuating conditions of the Pleistocene and could survive today's climate, as many believe they could, what went wrong? It seems neither humans nor climate change were to blame entirely for their disappearance. They were one of many large mammals that became extinct at the end of the Pleistocene, called the megafauna extinction. Some researchers have put forward another argument for the loss of mastodons. Perhaps the most well-known proboscidean roaming North America during the Pleistocene was the woolly mammoth. Mastodons and mammoths walked side by side, but they favored different conditions. During the Pleistocene, the ice sheets expanded and retreated over millions of years. When they covered the north and arid icy conditions prevailed, woolly mammoths dominated the landscape. But when the ice sheets receded and gave way to the forests, mastodons thrived in the warmer, wetter climate. Newer radiocarbon dating evidence suggests that the mastodon population may have been rising shortly before they became extinct. Humans had been around long enough to have come into contact with mastodons. Whilst there is evidence that humans often hunted woolly mammoths, this doesn't seem to be the case for mastodons. That's not to say that it didn't happen. There are three sites where it appears mastodons were butchered by early humans, but it seems unlikely that they were hunted to extinction. Equally, they had survived the fluctuations in climate during the late Miocene and into the Pleistocene, so this doesn't seem to have been a main factor. If their numbers were growing and their geographical distribution was so broad, then there must have been another reason for their demise. Large prehistoric predators like saber-toothed cats and short-faced bears were rare in the American Midwest where mastodons thrived. No evidence has been found to suggest adult mastodons were ever hunted by these carnivores. However, dens have been uncovered with juvenile woolly mammoth bones scattered throughout. If mastodons were eaten by predators, then it was likely the babies that were taken. But judging from the fossil record, it would have been a rare occurrence. Although having few to no predators may seem like a good thing for the mastodons, it meant that there was an imbalance in the trophic levels of the food chain. The following highlights the importance of apex predators in the ecosystem. Scientists now believe that the mastodon's success was their ultimate downfall. The large predators were largely absent from their ranges, and mastodons thrived on the vegetation available. Whilst this meant that their population swelled, it also made them more susceptible to volatile conditions. A change in climate such as drought or the sudden outbreak of disease could rapidly affect the mastodons they were more likely to fall into the dangerous cycle of boom and bust. During the bust phase of such a cycle, where numbers are at an all-time low, something else could have pushed them into extinction. This something else could have been climate change or hunting by humans. We believe that the mastodon could survive nowadays. The climate and habitat available to them are not all that different from what they lived in thousands of years ago. They would likely find enough food in North America's conifer woodlands. However, there could still be the threat of an unbalanced food chain. Would North America's predators help to keep the population healthy? Would bears take down young mastodons? Or wolf packs bring down adults? Who knows? One thing is for sure. If these giant elephant-like animals were reincarnated and released into North America's woodlands, they would have an impact on the ecosystem already established there. Their presence could lead to the destruction of woodland. However, if they had made it into the Holocene and modern era naturally, and the ecosystem adapted with them, 
then wouldn't it have been incredible to see them still roaming North America today? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.